In the last video, we started studying lexical semantics, which is the study of the meaning of words. We looked at how words are made up of two main components. There's the signifier, which is the string of phonemes that we produce with our mouths or our hands, and the signified, which is all of the mental images that a chain like dog conjures up in your brain. So we have the phonemes and the meaning, the mental images. And we looked at how the meaning has some sort of core component called the prototype, some core description called the features, and the meaning could have fuzzy edges where you have some central words that are very well accepted as dog, for example, and then some more um, some other examples that maybe don't fit perfectly into the category of dog, but you'd still accept them as dog. In this video, we'll study the relationships between words and how these meanings are interconnected to others. You know, we already know that words don't exist in a vacuum, that words have relationships with one another. For example, words can have synonyms, which are words of similar meaning, and antonyms which are words with the opposite meaning. We've seen these since grade school. Synonyms are very easy, like you're mad, you're also angry. And notice that they're not a perfect match. Each word is slightly different. They're just similar in meaning. Glad, happy, sad, gloomy. These are synonyms. There's also the connection of antonyms, for example, hot and cold. And notice that these two concepts also have fuzzy edges. You, there, there are some things that you're willing to admit are, you know, archetypically perfectly cold. But then there are some objects that you're willing to say, oh, it's cold, it's coldish, it's kind of cold, it's not really very cold. And then there's a point beyond which you're like, eh, no longer cold. So there are some things that are perfectly cold, and there are some other times when you're willing to describe something as cold, even though it's not as cold as the prototypical concept. So words, again, they don't exist on their own. They exist in relationship and in connection to others. There are many, many <laughs> types of connections that words can have. This is, the, this is an example of just two of them. You, uh, words can be connected to other by virtue of being hypernyms. A hypernym is a more general term for a word. For example, a hypernym of red is color because red is a type of color. A hyponym is a more specific term for a word. A hyponym of color is red and green and yellow and blue because these are all types of color. Let's have fun with them. This is a word which is made up of the signifier dog and a signified, which is all of the mental ideas that we have associated to this object in the real world. So if we have dog, what are some hypernyms for dog? What are some other categories that the word dog belongs to? On the other hand, what are some hyponyms for dogs? What are some words that are belong to dog but that are more specific? Try to come up with a few. Please pause the video. Right, you, I, these are some of the ones that I came up with. A dog is a kind of canine. A dog is a kind of mammal. It's also a kind of animal, and it is a kind of pet. So all these would be hypernyms of dog. And in your mind, these words would be connected to one another. Same as hot is uh, connected to cold. As for the hyponyms, some hyponyms for dog are corgi, poodle, beagle, also puppy, a puppy is a kind of dog, for example. So in your brain, you would have a prototype for the meaning of dog, like a, the picture of a corgi. You would have other examples of objects that could also be dogs. And then this set would also be connected to other sets, like animal, like puppy, by virtue of these relationships, like hypernym, hyponym, synonym, and so forth. 
So when you, what you end up having is a very complex network of meanings. We're going to call this the mental lexicon. So whenever you hear, hear this string of phonemes, dog, what your brain is doing is activating a whole neural network of meanings. It activates the core meaning, so probably something that looks like a corgi and that has the features plus animal plus canine and it can't fly. It activates other examples of what a good dog is, for example, those puppies. It activates examples of dog, but not amazing dog, like that uh, dog with the crazy hair down there. And it also activates the relationships. So it activates a, uh, with less strength, but it also activates the meanings for animal, for pet, for house and treat. Uh, for other related animals like cat. So all the sea of meanings is going to get activated in your brain when you hear the string dog. And this is what makes up, uh, this is what you have in your brain. We call it the mental lexicon. The lexicon is not just a, like a dictionary, like a list of words and a meaning. It is a complex network of relationships between a word made up of its signifier and its signified. The signified has a prototypical core with its describing features and examples of the meaning. And it has connections to other words. And that's why you can't help uh, remembering these things. When they tell you hot, your mind is also going to think of uh, things that are somewhat cold, a little bit, uh, somewhat hot, a little bit hot, and maybe not hot at all, cold. Your, what you have in your brain for words is called a mental lexicon. And it's made up of words with a signifier and a signified and their connection to other words which, with which they might share some characteristic like being synonyms, antonyms, hypernyms, and many others.